Thanks for joining us for the debut edition of the IUPUI Coaches Show live from Back Nine Golf Entertainment here in downtown Indianapolis on the ISC Sports Network. I'm Greg Regstraw, both with ISC as well as IUPUI Athletics. And joining us to start the inaugural edition of this program, he is the new director of athletics at IUPUI. It is Luke Basso. Luke, it is always good to see you. And why is having a show like this at a venue like this so important to you? Yeah, Greg, first of all, thanks for doing this. Happy to be here. We couldn't be more excited to do this at Back Nine, who's come on as a uh, sponsor with us. Great partners, uh, great event space, uh, great golfing venue. And for us, we've talked about this all along, Greg. We want more people to talk about IUPUI and what will become IU Indianapolis. And any coverage is great coverage. And we have a great host like you, who's such a, a proud supporter of the program. Uh, this is going to be a, a, a great partnership and a great program. Well, frankly, that has been one of the charges that you have led since kind of taking over this role over the course of the summer. And that is to find more sponsorship partners. I think it's 17 in total now that are a partner with IUPUI Athletics. I know you are always looking for more. But before we kind of get into even more of the big picture stuff in terms of athletics in general at IUPUI, I guess just your thoughts on the progress that has been made in that front in your first year on the job. On the sponsorship front? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I think we're up over 20 now. Okay. Uh, so I had an old number. Yes. My apologies. <laughs> no, no worries. Well, we're always doing it. I, I've told everybody in the department we're selling every day, whether it's uh, locally in the community, whether it's uh, athletes to come here. And it's, it's going well. Um, a lot of people just wanted to be asked. Um, they wanted to be a part of it. And, you know, Back Nine's a great example. They said, hey, we want to be a part of something. We want a little bit more specialized for us. And, you know, when you go to a big conference or big league, they have packages pre-made and said, hey, do this. Um, uh, we pride ourselves in being flexible uh, with whatever your end game is. We want to get you there. And it's been really exciting so far. And I, I hope to, you know, we, we know we have to raise money and we know we have to bring in sponsors. 20 this year. We're hoping for 40 next uh, and continue to grow that and give them great value every week. So, again, I'll give out Luke's cell phone and email uh, at some <laughs> yes. point in time in the show. And, again, this program, we will do this each and every one of the next six Mondays, including today at 1 o'clock. Again, ISCSportsNetwork.com, ISC's Twitter and YouTube, all the IUPUI, Jaguar social media outlets as well. Again, we'll do this every Monday from now through the first Monday in March from 1 until 1.30. So now let's go even bigger picture. Um, your experience was in kind of the political sphere and the business sphere. Why the jump into athletics over the course of last summer? Yeah, I, I, I told somebody the other day, Greg, they said, what's the biggest uh, difference between athletics and uh, politics? And I told them a lot of times it's just the word. Right. Uh, a lot, you know, a lot of the same thing, right? You have a constituent base that you're trying to make happy. Uh, you know, you're always out and trying to make the city of Indianapolis better uh, and do those different things. And for me, I'm from here, uh, from the north side of Indianapolis and, and grew up coming to IUPUI games and being on campus and going to Carroll Stadium. And, you know, I wouldn't have taken this job if I didn't think we could win. Uh, I've always been a sports fan. I was the chair of the Rise League men's, men's and women's basketball tournament. And when this opportunity presented itself, uh, it wasn't on my radar. But I said, when, they, when I was talking about it, thinking about it, I said, hey, there's no reason why we can't win. And, and I want to come do that here. And, and for me, um, being a, from Indianapolis, um, I know how important it is to the city and to the future of higher ed for IUPUI to be successful, uh, not just in academics, but also athletics. What are the things that, you know, you weren't thinking about when you took the job, but now you're like, I should have known that was coming. I, the, these are some of the hurdles I knew I'd have to kind of jump over. Yeah, yeah, and, and when I say this, all, all the people watching may also cringe uh, that are here live. Uh, you don't realize how much time you spend on logos when you're transitioning to a new name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's uh, that has been something uh, that we spent a lot of time on. But I, I want to be, I want our a student athletes, I want our coaches, I want our fans to be very proud to have the the Jaguar across their chest, and I want it to look good. Um, you know, when you have 268 student athletes, uh, they, they present things every day um, that, that, are, that are fun, but also challenging. And then, you know, with our coaches and, and a lot of the great ones are here, all the great ones are here today, um, you know, they all come with different personalities and different problems, right? So uh, every day you're, you're working uh, to let everybody know that the goal is to win. Right. And are we going to hold ourselves accountable to win, whether it's in the classroom or, or, or on the field or in the pool? So, um, you know, th I wish there was one thing I could tell you that I, I, I wasn't really expecting. But, you know, every day that's what makes this job fun um, is that every day we show up to the office. I, I'm not sure what to expect. I know what our goals are, but there's always a wrinkle here or there. And, you know, most wrinkles are led by Ed Holdaway. Um, and that's a, in, you know, Ed's been with the, the department 21 years. So he keeps me keeps me sane some days and, and keeps me busy others. All right, so 
with that, let's kind of get to something you alluded to, and that is the impending name change. From an administrator standpoint, behind the scenes, it's not that big of a difference. This has always been really an Indiana University campus, but no longer IUPUI as of July 1st. It will be IU Indianapolis. Obviously, there has been an aggressive marketing push for both IU and Purdue in town in terms of letting people know about that name change, but for athletics, what does it mean for you? Yeah, so first thing to your point, there's no change for us, right? If you, when you started at IUPUI, you were an, I, you were an IU employee. Um, you know, I always tell people it was more of a non-compete than a marriage. Um, and, you know, I, I've lived here my entire life, and it took me to starting this job to explain that. Um, so, so that's one. But two, I want to be very clear, like, Anybody who's played here as an alumni here, we're not losing that in the name change. We're still going to be very proud of our Jags that have come here and set records and been a part of this and do all those different things. Uh, there was a decision made uh, to, to you know, go IU Indianapolis, you know, Purdue, and, and what they're doing. And I think it'll be beneficial for everyone involved. It's really easy to explain what IU and Indianapolis is. Sometimes it's difficult to explain what IUPUI is. And I think moving forward, it's going to uh, allow kids, especially Indiana kids, we want more Indiana kids a part of our programs, um, to know where they're going and what they're coming through. Because, you know, one thing with our sponsors, Greg, I, I've heard from multiple. They will take Indianapolis kids a majority of the time, right? You can intern with them all year long. Um, they're, they're more than likely from Indiana, so you can be around more often. And they're going to hire them more often. We have a lot of student athletes who have been hired with our sponsors, and I think it's going to be overall a benefit uh, for us and the program. It may take a couple years of growing pains, but we'll get to the right spot. I know from a behind-the-scenes standpoint, again, the majority of kids are on an IU degree track. Some were on a Purdue degree track. What has that process been like trying to make all of those jigsaw puzzle pieces fit? Yeah, you know, uh, Laura Hugh and, and Denise Grady on our team, they've been great. Uh, we had a handful of kids that were on the Purdue track that we had to get have to get on the IU track. Um, and it's an adjustment, right? You come here and think you're going to go for a specific school, then all of a sudden one day you can't do that. Uh, but working really hard behind the scenes, to, to the number gets smaller and smaller every day on the kids we have to transition over to a, uh, to a new degree. And, and we feel very confident in the new degree they're going to get is just as valuable as the one they they were they're coming from uh, of the shows that we will do in february and that first monday in march we will try to highlight as many of the active sports as we can here at iupui so uh we'll get to basketball in a second but that includes swimming that includes track and field and tennis and softball we'll touch on all of those things a lot of those sports taking place right now you just don't think about it in late january early february but off the top this is Indiana, and it is basketball season, and the conference tournament is played in a building you have now called home, at least on the men's side, for the last 10 years. So just your thoughts on on, on the place that basketball has on the IUPUI campus. Yeah, uh, you know, you've heard this story before. When uh, I was the chair of the Rising Tournament, my dad would come to come with me to the games, and he'd always make the comment of the tip off of the game, why isn't IUPUI here, right? Um, and that kind of became the, you know, the the march of when I took this job, talked to President Witten, talked to the alumni, hey, we got to win in basketball. Um, and, and our coaches know that, who you hear from later. And, uh, you know, we're um, – you know, we're not where we want to be right now, and I think they would they would say the exact same thing. And whether it's basketball or it's tennis or it's swimming, the expectation here is to win. And in Indiana, uh, we have enough talent here in the Midwest to win. And I feel confident our coaches will get there. Um, you know, there, there's growing pains, there's changes. Um, but, you know, we, we need to win, and we know we need to do better on, on, on that side of the house right now, and we will. And we, we will, like, I, I can't say this enough, Greg, and the confidence, and people can say it's overconfidence, all those different things. If we couldn't win a basketball, and we did from the 70s until, sure. until late 2000s, we won. I, I was around the program with 10 consecutive years of 500 or better, so I know it well. Exactly. So when people say, hey, why do you think IUPUI can win or why do you think IUPUI, IU Indianapolis can win? Because we've done it before, and we will do it again. Like, there is no question in my mind we will win in basketball. And, you know, we, uh, we need to fill up the Coliseum and we need to fill up the jungle when our women's teams are playing. Um, but we will get to the right spot. All right, tell us about the leaders we're going to talk to coming up. Matt Crenshaw, Kate Bruce, they're going to join the show for the remainder of the program. First, Matt, then Kate. What should people know about your two men's and women's basketball coaches? Yeah, you know, I think I have to say Hall of Fame member Matt Crenshaw, right? All-time assist leader. Um, we put that in this contract. I have to say that every time. You know, Matt is a, uh, you know, military man, fantastic person to be around. Uh, you know, one of those one of those people that, you know, whether you're spending five minutes talking basketball or five minutes talking life, uh, uh, really fun to be around and, and uh, you know, understands the history of the program, one, when he was here. Um, and, you know, he's, uh, uh, we had a great chat about this weekend's games this morning. Uh, confident Matt 
And then, you know, a Kate, uh, you know, came for us from Walsh, Division II, uh, had a great, uh, cr a great coaching career there, obviously a great player in her own right, Florida Gulf Coast uh, Hall of Fame member down there, and, uh, you know, took over a program that, that had seen some success, and now she's putting her fingerprints on it. Um, you know, actually, go back to answer your question, Greg. One thing I didn't think of was injuries. I, I didn't realize how many, you know, you're going to have to deal with <laughs> they injuries. They happen. <laughs> yeah, so, so, you know, they're dealing with some, some, uh, some injuries on their side, but uh, lost a close one uh, yesterday, but... Uh, also a great person, great basketball mind, and, and really confident in both of them to uh, to get the programs uh, right on the right track. How's your golf game, by the way? Uh, my golf game? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, when I play, I hit it a lot. And not that I, I don't hit low scores, I just hit right. a lot. Yeah. You get more bang for your buck Exactly, that way. exactly. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, like a dollar per stroke or so uh, when I pay, so it works that way. If that's the case, you might be paying a lot here at Back Nine today because there's a staff outing that is taking place as soon as our show comes to conclusion. Luke, as always, thanks for the time and your friendship, and thanks for this opportunity. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Again, Luke Basso, Director of Athletics. We'll take this quick time out, and we will talk about uh, the men's basketball team with head coach Matt Crenshaw on a matter of moments. First, this for our friends at Katz, Sapper, and Miller, a CPA and advisory firm based in Indianapolis. KSM believes we all have a role to play in supporting the communities where we work and live, and the firm is committed to playing their part. KSM is proud to sponsor many mission-driven organizations, such as Jaguar Athletics, who is dedicated to providing and enhancing life-changing opportunities for IUPUI student-athletes. Let's go Jags. Back in a moment, it is the IUPUI Coaches Show debut edition here on ISC. Listen up, all you golf lovers. Looking for a private course for yourself or your company? Problem solved. Indy's Eastside Hidden Gym and Pete Dye's first 18-hole design is Maple Creek Golf and Country Club. Visit maplecreekgc.com today. At Indiana University, we're undaunted by challenge. We take the lead. We don't follow the crowd. Embracing the future with boldness and bravery. Unapologetically optimistic. Equipped with the knowledge and intention to change the world. Nine campuses, one purpose. Creating tomorrow, today. Indiana University, bring on tomorrow. Going the extra mile happens every day here at Perf Jones. College is one of the biggest milestones you will undergo in your lifetime. It's the excitement, I think, of knowing what you're producing is going to be on someone's wall with their diploma. It's pride, it's loyalty, it's passion. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. This is the place that's skill-built. Here, highly skilled physicians never rest in their pursuit to heal, to comfort, to cure. With these hands, you'll receive nationally recognized heart care and Indiana's most leading-edge cancer care. With these hearts, with these guts, with these brains, you'll find the highest level of care in the state. This is the hope that's skill-built, and it's around every corner of Indiana University Health. Back here at Back Nine is the IUPUI Coaches Show. Greg Rakestraw, head coach Matt Crenshaw of men's basketball, joins us coming up in a matter of moments. First, I want to thank one of our great sponsors, the good folks at Taylor's Bakery, Indy's oldest full-time bakery, whose mission is to bake happiness into every bite. Taylor's is a six-time WeddingWire.com award winner, recently crowned the best bakery in Indy in 2024 by Next Door. Custom cakes, irresistible donuts, danishes, other amazing treats. You can find them at 62nd and Allisonville Road, just east of Broad Ripple, 
uh, in East 116th Street in Fishers, Taylor's Bakery, Taylor made for you since 1913. And as soon as the show is over, we get to dive in some of the great food here at Back Nine. We've got Diavola flatbread, the big cheese flatbread, breadsticks, queso, and a beverage as well. Just a small sampling of the great food items you can uh, uh, enjoy when you're here at Back Nine Golf. Now, I'm going to age the both of us. Matt and I have been having conversations like this Oh, for about the last 23, 24 years. First as a player, then as an assistant coach, and now his third year in charge of the IUPUI men's basketball program. It is always good to see you, my friend. I know you had, you were hoping for a, a bit more wins by the time you got to this point in time of the season, but just overall, how you feeling into the final month of, of the uh, Hoops <laughs> regular season? Uh, optimistic, feeling good. You know, honestly, uh, the guys are uh, upbeat, positive, and, uh, you know, kind of, collectively coming together. You know, it, it, when you have transfers, you have new pieces, you have pieces that have been out. Just takes a minute for everybody to gel and truly understand their role and um, what we're expecting and looking for from them. Well, let's let's talk about the game that was played really 24 hours ago at this point. Yeah. Uh, the game against Wright State, again, a team that's given you fits. They've got a lot of teams in the league's fits for the last six or seven years. Bit of a slow start. You guys really kicked into the gear in half number two. Your overall takeaways from a seven-point loss yesterday. Um, you know, what, what you loved about the guys is that they, they fought back, dug herself a hole. Uh, then in the second half, didn't turn the ball over. Um, and then we just really amped up our intensity, amped up our defense, amped up our energy, uh, which brought some energy into the uh, Coliseum. And our guys fed off of it and, um, you know, gave yourself a chance. You know, you cut it to two with the ball, turn it over. And then uh, Calvin comes down, all-conference guy, comes down and makes a play, gets an and one. So... Uh, you're right there, and, and that's the thing that you, you see the flashes, and they're one of the, you know, uh, top teams in the league, and you can see yourself playing with them. Now it's just putting that 40 minutes together. You talk about blending in transfers, and, and you've got four Division One transfers on the team this year. Let's talk about a young man that had a career night for you yesterday, a career afternoon. Cottrell Blocker hadn't seen much of the floor over the course of the last four or five games. He goes for 18 yesterday. Tell us about his story. Uh, Cottrell, uh, you know, he showed um, who he is and the things that he can do on the floor is quite different. Uh, you know, that was something, you know, George was at the game, and it's something that we talked about, his athleticism, his quick tick, quick twitchness, his ability to get to the rim and his ability to uh, just make plays without having the ball. Uh, he put that all on display yesterday, and, and as you said, um, I commended him after the game because he didn't check in at all uh, versus Youngstown. And, um, and, you know, at times – that can be discouraging, but he came back the next few days with practice, right mindset, right attitude, which set him up to have a great game. And, uh, you know, though when we were going through the recruiting process, what you saw yesterday is what we were kind of looking from for Cottrell uh, throughout the season. But, again, as a transfer, it just takes a little bit to settle in and figure out your role, new place, new different things. You casually mentioned George. That would be George Hill, by the way, as an IUPUI legend. Uh, if you add Matt and George and throw Carlos Knox in there, you have all three of the retired numbers in the history of IUPUI men's basketball. Now that George isn't actively playing in the NBA for the first time for 15 years, which, again, ages the both of us in, in terms of saying that, yeah. um, just – What's the relationship like between you and George these days? Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's different now, right? Because you go from coach, mentor, right, kind of big brother figure, and now it's like, hey, he's giving me a little advice, or you know, because obviously, uh, as a person, you always can learn. And the NBA game is totally different; it's the highest level, uh, whether it's offense, defensive schemes. Those are things that we talk about. But uh, you know, Georgia came by practice Saturday, and uh, you know, he shared some words with the guys, whether it was at, after Thursday's game, but then Saturday he had, was able to watch the whole practice and just, you know, share some words of uh, wisdom with the guys. So just having a guy that's reached the highest level, as you know, everybody will raise their hand and say, I want to be a pro. Yeah. And uh, when you have somebody that's done it and uh, done it at your place and then been able to be successful and be in the league for 15 plus years, uh, just to be able to give back his knowledge and wisdom, it's, uh, you can't put a price on it. And we all know George, he's a guy that's going to give yeah. and share, and he's a humble guy. Well, we're going to have a longer-form conversation with, I just want to call him Crenny, uh, mm -hmm. like I did 20 years ago, but Coach okay. Crenshaw uh, next week on the show because we're going to talk about then the big game against Purdue-Fort Wayne coming up the following Saturday. So before we let you go and play a little golf and, and enjoy a little food here, um, let's talk about kind of life in the Horizon League. Mm -hmm. you got an 11 a.m. game at Green Bay on Thursday 
Then a Sunday game in Milwaukee. So what's the next week look like for you and your team? Uh, you touched on it. You know, 11 a.m., I think it's their kids' day game. But, uh, you know, I think it would probably be the only game on for college basketball, Division One. So uh, get a chance to showcase the Horizon League, showcase our program, their program. Um, and they're a good team. Coach has them playing really well. Um, they've had some record-breaking crowds at home over the last couple. Um, and I think – it was their first loss maybe this weekend in Milwaukee, both trips. So it's been a tough, tough trip uh, at both places as it was years ago. Uh, so you get through that game and then you got to go face Milwaukee. And they're two different teams, yeah. you know. Um, one's going to kind of press you a little bit and they have a great, you know, great team, great guards, but an all-conference four-man would be Jay Freeman. And, uh, and it's just two different styles of play. You know, they'll make – Green Bay is going to make some threes, Noah Reynolds, uh, He's he's a, a guy that's going to win some awards yeah. at the end of the season and uh, well-deserved on his play, but he's the catalyst for Green Bay and their style and uh, assist and, you know, shooting the three. And then, you know, something different. But for us, it's uh, two great challenges. But as you saw uh, at our home game versus Green Bay, I think we were up 10 double digits and uh, they went on a run, you know. So we just have to defend the three, don't turn the ball over, play how we're capable of playing. Yeah. And then uh, we haven't had a chance to see Milwaukee yet. It's the only team we haven't seen in conference. So it'll be a, a great, great test for us. Uh, you know, we're kind of similar with their style and how they play, understand what they're trying to do. So it'll be a great opportunity for us this week. Man, as always, thanks for the time, buddy. Safe yeah. travels, and I will uh, see you here next week. Yes, sir. IUPUI head coach Matt Crenshaw, kind enough to join us here on the IUPUI Coaches. So to support Matt's program and all the athletic programs at IUPUI, learn more about the Jaguars Athletic Fund. Log on now, IUPUIJags.com slash give now slash JAF. It brings together financial contributions from IUPUI alumni, family, friends, to support over 250 student athletes on campus. Women's head coach Kate Bruce joins us next. We're quickly winding down the inaugural edition of the IUPUI Coaches Show here on the ISC Sports Network. Listen up, all you golf lovers. Looking for a private course for yourself or your company? Problem solved. Indy's Eastside Hidden Gym and Pete Dye's first 18-hole design is Maple Creek Golf and Country Club. Visit maplecreekgc.com today. At Indiana University, we're undaunted by challenge. We take the lead. We don't follow the crowd. Embracing the future with boldness and bravery. Unapologetically optimistic. Equipped with the knowledge and intention to change the world. Nine campuses, one purpose. Creating tomorrow, today. Indiana University, bring on tomorrow. Going the extra mile happens every day here at Perf Jones. College is one of the biggest milestones you will undergo in your lifetime. It's the excitement, I think, of knowing what you're producing is going to be on someone's wall with their diploma. It's pride, it's loyalty, it's passion. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. This is the place that's skill-built. Here, highly skilled physicians never rest in their pursuit to heal, to comfort, to cure. With these hands, you'll receive nationally recognized heart care and Indiana's most leading-edge cancer care. With these hearts, with these guts, with these brains, you'll find the highest level of care in the state. This is the hope that's skill-built, and it's around every corner of Indiana University Health. 
logo. The guys are just teasing me. You know, while they get to enjoy the food, I'm sitting here yapping. Now the show wraps up in about seven or eight minutes. I think one of those plates would be mine. There is no such weight like that when you come to Back Nine Golf and Entertainment. Again, we are just southwest of downtown. You literally can't miss it. The netting around the sill is kind of like the North Stars. You can find it wherever you're going to be in downtown Indianapolis. I think another great sponsor of ours, the good folks at 92C Partners. Proud to support Jaguar Athletics. 92C Partners is a women-owned, full-service commercial real estate firm serving clients throughout Indiana and beyond. In addition to brokerage services, 92C provides strategic planning, space design, construction management, and project management. If you have real estate needs, please visit 92partners.com. Our final partner for the show is the women's basketball coach and Kate Bruce at IUPUI. Much like the men's team they played yesterday, had another close home loss as well to the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Kate, thank you so much for joining us. And I know this has been a year with several challenges on the injury front for you. How are you keeping your sanity at this point? <laughs> um, yeah, there's been a lot of adversity. And, you know, I don't think it was a surprise. We we had to bring in 10 new players. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're, we're on a rebuild. And, unfortunately, we had a couple injuries early. And um, we're working our way back. Um, I've been very happy with the girls and their positivity. And um, we all want the same thing. And, you know, honestly, off the court, it's been a lot of fun to hang out with them this year. And we're just trying to build a culture and, and get this back to where it needs to be. All right. I get Luke touch on this in the opening of the show. Outstanding run at Walsh. Division two, great Midwest Athletic Conference. What was it about this job that was so appealing to you a couple of years ago to make the move to Division one? Yeah, I mean, I loved Walsh, and I felt like I got the program um, to where to the point it, the highest point it could get, and I was ready for the next challenge. And um, you know, me and my husband were very strategic that we weren't going to take just any job. We were in a good spot, and when this job came open, um, they had shown that they could have success. Indianapolis is an amazing city. Um, we just thought this was a place where we could raise our three young kids and be happy for a really long time. All right, so how is family life in Indianapolis being a transplant now back to Indy? Family life is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. We're actually up in Carmel. Um, the kids love it. It's beautiful. There's so much to do, especially with kids. Gosh, we come down to Indy all the time, the Children's Museum. I mean, it, it's been great. All right, so 4-15 um, and 15 is the overall record. Again, you knew this would be a bit of a transitional Shh, year. I need to say that out loud. Okay, edit that part. <laughs> get, 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 get that part in post. Um, but whenever I have seen box scores fly by or see highlights, Katie Davidson's fingerprints appear to be all over your successes. Uh, from Lawrence North, uh, part of a, of a state runner-up team there at LN, what has she meant to your team this year? Yeah, she's been great. I mean, she is just – so talented at basketball and we love the fact that she's from our hometown and sure. that's what we want to continue to do is get these Indianapolis players to stay here um, we think we have really something something really special to offer but she's been fantastic and you know we have a lot of good players I just think we just have not found our chemistry yet and I don't want to harbor on the injuries but it's like we haven't been able to play all together sure. enough to get there but Katie's been huge um, and she elevates people in practice and we're really really fortunate to have her as a part of our program. All right one more month and again obviously you're going to be in the conference tournament you have a chance to improve that seating yes. over the last month what's yes. going to be kind of the the key things you want to see for your team heading into the postseason? Yeah, I mean, we want to get going here. It's cliche, but you want to be playing your best basketball in February and March, and that's what it's going to come down to. We've shown moments of greatness. Um, we just have to get more consistent. You know, we'll have quarters where we hold opponents to 11, and we'll have quarters where we give up 32. <laughs> um, vice versa, on the offensive side, we'll have quarters we score 23. And then we'll have quarters we score 10. So we just have to get more consistent. We have to take care of the basketball. Um, and then lately here, we just have not done a great job on the defensive glass. So we've got to finish the possession with rebound. Well, we talked about this with Coach Crenshaw. He's got the road version that's playing an 11 a.m. game on Thursday. You have an 11 a.m. game on campus at the Jungle on Wednesday. Tell us about it. Yeah, we're excited. The school day game, um, what a great opportunity. Wake up, play some basketball. Um, it's going to be fun. We're expecting a great crowd, and we're excited about it. It does not take a lot for that building to get loud. Right. Now you yes, have, you know, let's pack this jungle. Hundreds of young students. You got earplugs ready 
for, for Wednesday? <laughs> well, with three kids, I'm quite used, used to it. I can it. tune that stuff out. So yeah. I'll be ready to go. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to have a lot of energy in there. Um, and our girls are excited to uh, play. Much, much like we talked on, on this with Matt, we're going to have more of a show dedicated to women's basketball coming up later in this six-week run as well. So very much looking forward to having another conversation with in the very near future. Best looking at the Penguins on Wednesday afternoon. All right. Thank you so much. And that will do it for the inaugural edition of the IUPUI Coaches Show. Again, we'll do this every Monday at back nine. Uh, so thank you to them for being a great partner of ours with IUPUI Athletics. Thanks to our ISC crew behind the scenes, that being Jordan Shue, Vince Morales, as well as J.D. Arland. Again, IUPUIJags.com always has more. IUPUI Jaguars on Twitter to follow all, follow all the athletic programs at IUPUI. For our great guests, my name is Greg Reichstraw. Thanks for joining us. We'll do it again next week right here on the ISC Sports Network. Listen up, all you golf lovers. Looking for a private course for yourself or your company? Problem solved. Indy's Eastside Hidden Gym and Pete Dye's first 18-hole design is Maple Creek Golf and Country Club. Visit maplecreekgc.com today.